네, 그럼 지금부터 이 사회 공헌 Let us now start session 5 titled Social Contribution and the Youth s e m a u l Undong. The fifth session will be moderated by Professor Um s o k j i n of Seoul National University. We will be hearing from five youth who has participated in s e m a u l Undong volunteer programs both home and abroad. Let us take a look at how the youth can be the center of s e m a u l Undong projects. Let us now invite Professor u m s o k j i n Please welcome the moderator with a big round of applause. Thank you very much. I am u n g s o k j i n Professor of Graduate School of Public Administration at Seoul National University. It is indeed a great pleasure for me to moderate this session, which is very meaningful. We have just heard from President Choi w e c h u l about Smart s e m a u l Undong. Smart s e m a u l Undong is not just in our heads. It has to be executed. and strategies are needed. And so I do believe that this session will be an opportunity for us to take a look into how we can make smart s e m a u l successful. We have invited five youth s e m a u l activists who will share with us their challenges and achievements. In the 1960s and 70s, s e m a u l Undong, although was led by the government, the efforts of the s e m a u l leaders were very important. And so, I do believe that here in the 2020s and 2030s, if we continue s e m a u l Undong, then the s e m a u l leaders will continue to play a large role, like the youth that we have on stage. And that is why today's session is titled Social Contribution and the Youth s e m a u l Undong. We have invited five youth who are conducting s e m a u l Undong in their respective fields. We will listen to their opinions on s e m a u l Undong and their experience. So I do believe that I am younger than other moderators, although in, I am in my 50s. So I hope that I will be included in the youth as well. I tried to make a joke, but no one is laughing, maybe because we are at a very serious gathering. So let's take this opportunity to introduce each of our presenters. First, we have c h o n g Yoon-hee. Good afternoon. I hope you can hear me well. Hello, I am c h o n g Yoon-hee, the leader of the s e m a u l Youth Forum. Allow me to remain seated before I make my presentation. Yes, so we are going to go have a round of introduction. Well, then I am also acting as a director of Danjit Incorporated in Daegu, and also I have started the s e m a u l Youth Forum since September last year. Yes, so we will first have the round of introductions first. Next, we have Kim h y u n g c h o l I am really glad that I have been classified as youth. I am Kim h y u n g c h o l I am. Yes, we have Kwon Gi Yoon. I am Kwon Gi Yoon. I visited Sri Lanka for two years as a part of the Youth s e m a u l Movement. Then we have Lee Sung Hoon. Good afternoon. I had an opportunity to volunteer in Vietnam, and I am currently a freshman at t o g e High School. Sorry, you are Pae So Yeon, Pae So An. And last but not least, we have Lee Sung Hoon. Good afternoon. In 2017, I became a freshman at Yongnam University, and I just participated in an international internship program 
for a year thanks to the COICA program. And currently, I am working at the COICA program for youth. Thank you very much. Yes, I can see that we have many young people on stage. So we have one person who is glad to be a part of the youth session, like myself. So let us now take turns in sharing how you became a part of Semaurundong and what are your activities. So a short presentation, please. Let us start with Chung Yun Hee. Good afternoon. Yes, great to meet you all. My name is Chung Yun Hee. Now then, if I may tell you about my relations with Semaurundong. Now, up until last year, I was working as a cultural curator, and then there is this one anecdote. We have a non-profit gallery. It's called VOD Gallery in Daegu. And at this gallery, we do curate a show every month. And last year, my director all of a sudden tells me that we are not able to have the show for that month. So then I was thinking about an alternative, and I was moving in my car. And then I looked out the window and I saw the Sema logo, just like Destiny. So I got to curate a Sema exhibition. And I had always been interested in Sema Rundo, and I was wondering about the young people's perceptions about Sema Rundo. Because from youth perspective, it looks quite old, quite outdated. And I always thought about how it should look to the young people, how it should be perceived by young people. So then I dealt with Sema Rundong as an exhibition, and then that led me to contact with those who were passionate, enthusiastic about Sema Rundong. I was highly impressed by that. And then now, uh, I got the help from the Semal Foundation and also the Semal Association in Chongdo. So thanks to their help, we were able to successfully host the exhibition and also an extension of the exhibition as well. And so we were able to put up a program that is fresh and young ever since then, together with other related organizations. And then, now this time, the Sema Foundation also has given me a chance to run an exhibition called the Sema Undong Forum, Youth Forum. So this is what we did last year, the exhibition from last year. So this is the cafe called Daegungjeong. We also have a gallery and an independent library. So this is what we did last year. We also got help from Yongnam University. So I'm, let me, I should have actually shown you these images as I was talking. And this is from September last year. So that is the Semal Youth Forum when we were first getting started. So Mr. Lee Seung Jung from the foundation and also Kwon Young Jin, the mayor, also came. And so we were able to successfully complete it together with other young people and also the Cheongdo and also Semaul environmental movement and also with municipalities, a lot of campaigns, and then also above that, we are about to open a globalization of Semaul Undong Hall. So then I look, I ask for your support for our movement. Thank you. All right, thank you. Thank you. So, yes, new and fresh. Perspective is highly impressive, I would say, yes. Next is Kim young Chal. Well, the reason I started Semarundong was from 2008. That was 15 years ago. I participated in a volunteer program in Rwanda, and I was there for two years as a volunteer, and when my time was about to end, my interest for international cooperation was heightened. And I had an opportunity to join COICA, so 
I joined Koika and then I went to Senegal to participate in international development. And then in 2015, I was young, but I lived in Africa for over five years, and that had a strain on my body. But despite so, I was still there, and I thought maybe I need to come back to Korea. And at that time, the Gyeongsangbuk-do province came to Senegal, where I was at. And that was the first time that I started to work for Semaul, and so I joined the Semaul Foundation to work at the Sem Senegal office and the Cambodia office. So that continued until now. So as the head of the Senegal office and Cambodia office, could you introduce the work that you did? So as the head of the Senegal office and the Cambodia office, we would create a governance so that Semaul could be introduced to those countries. When we do Semaul, participation of the residents is important, but at the same time, the support of the local government is very important. And the support of the local government is what guarantees sustainability. And so the Semaul Foundation was registered as a foreign affairs institute in Senegal, thanks to these efforts. And in Cambodia, the Minister of Environment and the governors actually presented us with a lot of plaques of appreciation, and that actually raised the image of Gyeongsangbuk-do province in Cambodia. Thank you very much. So working with governance is what you mentioned, and many people talk about civilian diplomats, and he actually was a civilian diplomat. Next, let's go to Kwon Gi-yun. <laughs> Now, for me, I got to meet with Semaul Undong in my school days. Personally, my role model was Father Itesok, who spent half his life in South Sudan. So, if possible, then I wanted to dedicate myself to service in Africa or where my help is needed. But then now, when I was in university, I saw an ad looking for Semaul youth leader, and that is how I got to be associated with Semaul Undong. Okay, then, as a global Semaul youth leader, then could you tell me a bit about your activities? Right, so where I worked, Sri Lanka, then the work was focused on income generation through mushroom cultivation. So what I did was to construct a building and purchase materials and equipment and also educate the farmers about mushroom cultivation. And so basically it was about income generation through various activities. So as you can see here, we constructed this building and also in relation, the bathroom and other facilities, and also the packaging room. So we also built the packaging room. And also, when cultivating mushroom, what is most important is electricity. So we also worked together with the utility company in Sri Lanka to get access to power as well. And also in Sri Lanka, not only mushroom, but also growing other like pumpkins or also corn and rice. So we also engaged in other activities to help their income generation. And then also other equipment like equipment and also controllers to help with their agricultural work. 
and also for the local residents, for them to have the knowledge to grow the mushroom, we also invite experts from Korea to provide training. And together with experts, we also toured around the mushroom cultivation area as well as a dark room to get their advice on the best environment that we could create. And then so these are the activities that we have done. And then also this is the qualitative evaluation to understand whether the locals had a good understanding of the training. We also had communication activities together with the municipality to market our products. So I also appear in these photos and I also remember selling the products together. Then also for children of broken homes, we also provided material support and we took out a percent of proceeds from the mushroom sales to also give back to the society. So that is all. Okay, thank you. Thank you. So I can see that, yes, a remarkable set of activities. Thank you. Next, Pei so Yun, could you share with us how you started to participate in the Semar Undong? I went to the volunteer program at, in Vietnam and I only learned of Semar Undong through my parents and books before I went to Vietnam. But when I went to Vietnam, I learned about Semar Undong. Could you share with us your volunteer program in Vietnam? I worked with students in Vietnam and I also worked on wall painting in Vietnam. Well, could you explain the pictures a little further? So here, we went to a school for students with disabilities and this is a welcome dance by the students and we also thank them by singing a song that we had prepared and we also had craft activities. We also painted some of the walls in the village. We came up with the pictures to paint and we did the painting ourselves. Thank you very much. Okay, and next, Mr. Lee sung -hun. So how did you get started with Semar Undong? Good afternoon. So I did mention briefly in my introduction. So in 2017, I went to the Semar International Development Department of Yongnam University and I would say that that is how I got to start with Semar Undong. Then in the Semar International Development Department, what did you learn and how did you try to apply what you learned on the, to the field? Well then, for those who are new, if I tell them I am a student of SEMA International Development Department and then they ask me then what do you learn there and what kind of job can you get out of school. Now if I may briefly explain then the SEMA International Development Department it started out as a local social development department and then in addition to that now then it turned into a regional development and welfare department and then now in the 2010s with growing international awareness and mindset so it then changed to the Semaul International Development Department and I became a student in 2017 and what you're seeing now is a competition under my department and I actually tried to add more photos but then 
I was not able to, so this is the only photo of this event. Anyway, so I became a student of the International Development Department to learn about Semarundong as well as the ODA, and I had a corresponding increase in interest in Semarundong. Then I also learned how it was being applied to other countries, how it was also being disseminated to other countries. And so to learn it better and to experience it better, I also stayed in Indonesia for one year last year to observe and experience what was going on in the field. Very impressive. Thank you. So then I see that Mostly their activities are based in Korea or also some of them, their activities are based in other countries. Then now, could there be any anecdotes that you could share with us? Some interesting anecdotes overseas or any achievements that you are proud of that you would like to share with us? So then let me first go to Mr. Kim hyung chul about your overseas activities. So any interesting anecdotes that you can share with us? And then, in the course of your activities, any, let's say, achievements that you're proud of or any highlights that you'd like to share with us? So in Senegal, because uh, Senegal believes that Tenanga is important and Tenanga is a way of welcome. So if there's someone new or from someplace else, they would be welcomed into the villages. As I mentioned before, since I was from the Senegal office, governance was our main role, but we also had demonstration villages. In seven to eight years, for the first time in seven to eight years, I met a teacher who worked with me in Senegal today and welcoming is very important in the Senegal culture. When I first visited one of our project villages, there was the mayor of that village and that person prepared a meal. And from a Korean perspective, it was not a dish that we were familiar with and I had no choice but to eat it, but it was a food that was not something that I was familiar with. But it was like a village festival. And in Cambodia, they have warm hospitality. And that was something that I was pleasantly surprised with because I was a foreigner, but I could feel their warm hospitality. And I, before I mention one anecdote, I wanted to share with you this culture. And if I may share my anecdote with you, the roads from the village always was full of people bringing food to us because they had improved their productivity through Semarundong. When I first went to Senegal, it was difficult for me to become familiar with the local food, but I miss the food now. So I don't know if this is an appropriate anecdote, but it is the anecdote that I wanted to share here. You can see pictures of Senegal. So that's the food. And the food here is from our training. Well, the local food. Jebujian and Mape are the local foods of food of Senegal. I really miss the food and I miss the warm hospitality. And so that really is an episode that I wanted to share with you. 
And Kwon g i o n would you like to share your anecdote? 사무실에 첫 발령을 받았어. Well, now for me, when I was first sent to the office, then I remember the employee that I first met. So it was, I mean, she was nearly a girl, just fresh out of school. And then now we were talking about the project, and then we also talked about our dreams. And then I listened to her dream, and I was shocked. She wanted to work in a factory in Korea. Now, working in a factory in Korea is something to be avoided. But then, for her, it was her true dream. She wanted to be an industrial worker in Korea so that she can support her family. And now, to realize her dream, she was learning Korean language and Korean culture in this very small village in Sri Lanka. So then, I also taught her many work skills like Excel or other skills, and she was not able to come to Korea yet, but through my foundation, I'm sure that she is still keeping her dream alive. And before we conduct any project, we conduct a survey first. We visit each village to understand the general income level and also the spending level of each household. So we would go around all the households to understand their income level, but then what I was quite surprising was, now despite this being a very small village in Sri Lanka, I could see that they were spending about 50% of their income to their children's education. So I was very much surprised. And so I could sense their determination to have a, to ensure a better life for their children. And also I found an opportunity for s a m a r u n d o n g to make contribution. Let's go on to p e s a o An. Are there any anecdotes that you would like to share? Any stories? Well, the story that I remember is when I volunteered for the school for students with disabilities in Vietnam. They actually danced for us to welcome us to the school. The teachers mentioned that we need to return the favor and prepare a performance for them. And so we stayed up all night preparing a song for us to perform. And I made friends there. And there was a person by the name of Yuni. And Yuni continues to talk to me using DMs on Instagram. And Uni used a translation, machine translation, to tell us that when we become adults, let's meet again. And I still remember Uni's statement. And I am working hard at school to become a good adult so that I can meet her again. Yes, that was quite moving. Maybe a big round of applause. Let's go on to Lee s o n g h u n Are there any fun stories that you would like to share? Uh -huh. Well, rather than interesting stories, but personally, for me, working in other countries, what I really empathize with was, now I was living in a village in Indonesia to lead Sema r u n d o n g and now after uh, training, I received a message from one of the villagers. The village that I was in, so they had just started the Sema r u n d o n g so I was looking around the village, met up with the residents and the officials to better understand what kind of projects they, ne they needed and the kind of training that they needed. So we were doing something like a demand survey. And then 
my team thought about coming up with a mushroom cultivation training. So we are planning for this training, and we completed three sessions of the training. And then uh, afterwards, I cleaned up, was getting ready to go back home. And then one villager sent me a message saying that I just went through the mushroom cultivation training, and then now I became quite interested in this income-generating business. So then I am going to spend, so they, so this person spent his savings to buy the mushroom seed culture. And then, so before then, I hadn't, so I had been thinking that I would be engaging in Semaurundong. Yes, I will be in international cooperation. But then it was around this time that I was beginning to have my doubts. But then I could see that through this training, this person was able to learn something new and was determined to make improvement. So getting the message from him, I felt quite rewarded. Okay, thank you. So while you are conducting various activities, we saw some great pictures, but I'm sure that there were difficulties along the way, and maybe you saw some room for improvement as well. So could you share with us any challenges or any room for improvement that you saw for Semaurundong? Could you share those with us? Let's go to Kim young Chal first. Me? Yes. Well, it's difficult for me to talk about issues, but if we want to display Semaul to the world, and that is the work that I did in these international offices, what is important is to know the culture of the local area, the weather, and all the specific situation of the local areas. But all Semaul projects happen at a given year. So there's a plan for projects, and so the projects have to be implemented according to the plan. And so I think we need to have an additional set of programs to learn about the culture and absorb the local culture. And I believe that that will be the shortcut to displaying Semaul to the world. And there's no silver bullet. There will be no ideal Semaul for the whole world. For Senegal, I opened the Senegal office in a remote area and so I had opportunities to learn about the local people. And I noticed that ethnic clans are very important in Senegal. But for Semaul, the organization is very important. And so it may not work so well with clans that are nomads. And so we need to find ways to localize Semaul for each local area. Yes, thank you very much. This is something that's very important. So creating programs appropriate for the local situation and Semaul usually is not being driven by the local government. And so may I add to this? Yes, I would like to add to this. And so having been aware of this, what I did was for ODA projects, the success depends on who designs the project. Is the project designed by the local community or is the project designed by a third party? We need to make sure that the local people 
design the project. I think that is the biggest issue we have to look at. Thank you very much for your remarks, and thank you very much for the outstanding points. Kwon g i y u n 네. Now, for the projects in Sri Lanka, the reporting structure, the reporting structure was very tightly designed. So let's say during the construction, if we are to cut off one tree, then we needed to get the approval from the provincial government. So just to cut off one tree, then we had to make a report and get the approval from the provincial government each and every time. So I also remember that the work was quite slow. Then also because the electronic system is not very well developed there, so we had to go through the post office. One week arriving, another week receiving it back. So then just to get one very small approval, we had to allocate at least half a month. So for me, that was quite frustrating. And so I would say that that was part of the structural issues or institutional drawback. And perhaps there is really no fundamental solution to this. But then perhaps now for, let's say, in certain cases like Sema Arundong, perhaps you could ask for something like a fast track. So as was mentioned earlier, so as we continue with the projects, then the Sema Arundong became better known. And then now under the, under the provincial government, they now have a separate department for Sema Arundong. So then our work also picked up speed, but still, We, there is much more improvement to be made, so I hope that we need to communicate more to the state government as well as the officials so that our work would also pick up speed. Okay, thank you very much. So truly from the field, thank you very much. Yes, Pae So Yoon. Well, someone mentioned that we need programs that are appropriate for the local areas, and I could really relate to that statement. We drew paintings on the walls, and it was during the rainy season. And so it took us days to paint the wall. But when it rained, we saw that the paintings would be washed away from the rain. And the art teacher, Lee Sung-min, from Tomi Togei High School, Without his help, I don't think we would have been able to solve the wall painting issue. So I do believe that having programs appropriate for the local weather is important. And second is meals. Well, meals were decided every day. And someone named Mihi, who was a local student, staff for s e m a u l would always make reservations, but sometimes the restaurants would not have enough seats available, and sometimes the restaurants would be closed on that particular day, so that, would, that was a great challenge. And so I think it would have been great if the meals were planned ahead. So I think that needs to be improved. Yes. It may look trivial, but it certainly is very important because the activists are working for a grand vision, but meals are always very important. And so it's very difficult to be motivated if those everyday things are not solved. Let's go to Lee Sung-hoon. Oh. Well, for me, living overseas, and personally, I didn't really experience difficulties, but then now, in relation to s e m a r u n d o n g itself, there were some areas of improvement that I had experienced. Now, first is, now in the village that I was in, it was from 21 to 26, so the project had a five-year period. Now, in the beginning, so from 2021, If we had been able to start the project from then, then it would have been great. But now in the beginning, we didn't really have a master plan. We really had no established framework. So we 
nearly wasted 2021. And then now it was from 2022 that we finally came up with the master plan and put a structure to the project implementation. Now, because of that, then now, like for example, in COICA and other organizations, they would have like an N-2, meaning that they would start with the preparation work, like for example, master plan, and then start the project. But in my case, I mean the first year, 2021, it was pretty much gone. So then the benefits that are to go to the villagers, I believe, could be lessened because of this. And so if we are to start projects of our own, then I hope that it could be in a better structure, for example, N-2, starting with the master planning, and then start right on time so that we can continue with the project and complete the project on schedule. All right, thank you very much. Despite difficulties overseas, thank you very much for achieving results and also giving us ideas for future Semaul Undong. So let's go back to the situation in Korea. So let us go to Chung Yun Hee, who participated in domestic activities. So what are some of the challenges and what are the areas that have room for improvement? All right, then what I am doing, the Semaul Youth Forum. So this is domestic activity, which probably is not familiar to you. So let me explain a little bit. Again, this is Hemal Youth Forum that was launched last September. And now it is called Hemal Youth Empathy Forum. And this is being supported by the Hemal Foundation and also the Gyeongbuk Province, which is the leader of Hemal Rundong. So this is one of the domestic campaigns to enhance awareness of Semarundong among young generation. So there are a number of activities, for example, for participation and involvement to also showcase the three values of Semaul. And then now we also have updated the values, diligence to self-leadership and also for self-help, uh, leadership and competence. So we have updated the values for the young generation. And then now uh, this is where they can share their stories for self-development and have honest discussions about Semaul and their selves as well. So we would also be having the second Semaul Youth Empathy Forum and also the third forum soon. So I ask for interest and also on the Instagram, please look for Semal Youth Forum or Semal Youth Empathy Forum. Then you can also look it up and ask for participation as well. Now I see that all the other panelists have been active abroad. For example, ODA. So I see that they are in more colorful work. But then in my case, this being domestic activity, I would say that it's a bit different from overseas work. Now, it is actually quite challenging to draw interest from young people in Semarundong because young people today, they are more interested in, interested in things that are directly related to them. Otherwise, they are not interested at all. Now, Semarundong in the past, it was mostly for poverty eradication in rural villages and also to help economic growth. So that was also a part of uh, mental education as well. But then again, it is very difficult to approach young people with this movement. And the young people are not interested in issues that appear to be distant from them, like for example, issues of the environment in other countries. So then what I 
believe we need to do is for the Semarundong to focus on some of the more realistic issues. For example, some of the urgent issues that our society is facing. One example could be now in my gallery, now we now have an exhibition under the theme of Korea becoming extinct. So now, as we are faced with a demographic cliff, then how can we create a haven for the young people? Then I would say that we also need a new Semarundong that can address the potential extinction of our local areas and the population. So I want to create a linkage between such Semarundong uh, and the reality of today. And I'm not sure whether I can go on with these issues, but now before I got engaged with the Semal Youth Forum, now for me Semarundong was always a topic of interest and fun for me, so I never thought that Semarundong would be so challenging. But then uh, after the first forum I had, I was also able to personally better understand why young people remain distant from Semarundong. So from the young people's perspective, it appeared to be too old and too fixed and also It was mostly exclusive to the government or government-related organizations. So if we do not see it from a collective perspective, then Semarundong belongs to us all. And I believe that it has to be for the purpose of generating common values for us all. And I hope that we can sustain these values. And for the young people to be interested in Semarundong, then we need to have a chance for the related organizations to look back on themselves first. So for example, now our project is over, so they all leave. So we only have the Semarundong people left here. So you know, it does not appear to be right in the spirit of Semarundong. So those are some of the issues that I wanted to share with you. Well, I'm a moderator here, and I have to reflect upon myself. I study at the universities and I write papers, but I maybe I only talked about the past. And so I do believe that we need to take a look at the current issues on the ground. And I think I was locked in thoughts about the past, and having heard Chung Yoon Yi, I it's great that she mentioned what is very appropriate and timely. Semaurundong has parts that are remaining from the past, and we do need to update and modernize some parts. So we have actually had some common questions to all of you, but now we would like to go into some detailed questions. Lee sung -hun, you are a part of COICA. And you also major in this field in your school. Then what is your future plan? And also, how does that plan fit in with your vision for your future? So if you could share that with us, I believe that that could also have quite a lot of implications for the others. Now, by until February next year, I would be working at the Sema Foundation as a YP. And after my tenure is over, I would also be graduating from university. But to move on to international development cooperation, I believe that I also had to study further at graduate school. So after I finish my YP term and graduating from university, then I would have to move on to graduate school or PAO or as a coordinator in Koika, I would like to go work in another country. So good. So I hope that you can achieve your dream and I hope that you will be able to achieve your vision as well. So why don't we give him a big round of applause for encouragement? Thank you. So Yun. Let's go to Peso Yun. She is a high school student. 
So it's great that she's doing this work. So related to Sema Rundong, what are some of your future plans? And how have you been able to renew your views about Sema Rundong? Well, through the volunteer program in Vietnam, well, through this time around, this was the first time I had ever gone overseas. And so it was a series of firsts for me and so from the food that we ate, the weather, and the scent from the air, all of that was very new. And it was quite amazing. And what I remember the most is that when the volunteer program was over, we boarded a van marked Semaul and there was someone who met eye to eye with us and we said hello and they really welcomed us and they took our pictures and this was so interesting and it was very new for me and I'm so happy to have experienced this and it's a privilege for me to experience this. And so I look forward to actually filling my days with new experiences. Thank you very much. Semaul Undong sometimes feels like a very heavy topic, but thanks to Peso An, it feels much more lively. And it feels like we need a new approach. And so it's great to hear from her. So we heard some final comments. And to the remaining three people, what do you believe should be the future direction of Semao Rundong? In particular, what do you believe will bring in more youth participation so that we can become a new and to the Semar Foundation, to the local government, and to the government, what do you believe should be their support to attract more youth? First, Chong Yuni, I think maybe you can add to what you have already stated. <laughs> Well, was I, I? I believe that I was actually. I, I said what I wanted to say. Anyway, so then for the young people, I understand that the municipalities are trying to attract young people so that they will stay in their municipality. But uh, I think uh, that is something to be said somewhere else. And now regarding the Semal Youth Empathy Forum, I would like to say something else. and. That is about ubiquitous. So I am sure that you all know the word ubiquitous. So in Latin, ubiquitous means that it is omnipresent, that it is present everywhere, anytime. So then for Sema Rundong, of course it has to renew itself. And so it is about renewing oneself and developing oneself. And to apply this to the millennials and Gen Z, then I think uh, we were focusing only on renewing something that is old. But then what I recently realized was that now Sema Rundong, ever since it got started, it had always been embedded in the Korean's mind as at least a concept. So even for the young generation who did not experience Sema Rundong, Still, it exists in their mind as one concept or one notion. And also, if you are to learn something or to play sports or do group assignment in university or pick up waste from the street, 
So everything that we do, everything that we do that we are responsible for, then that is also related to Semarundong. So I believe that we need to have the kind of program that will help the young people make that linkage between living my own life, being responsible for my own life, also being responsible for the society, trying to deal with it together with Semarundong. So to make Semarundong more ubiquitous. So then we are always recruiting young people for to our forum. So please, you could look us up on Instagram. And I would also like to thank Mr. Lee Seung Jung of Semao Foundation for your generous support. Thank you. Yes, yeah, Semao Ubiquitous is a new concept that may be a concept that is very familiar with the youth. And she did give us some promotional messages as well. Let's go on to Kim Young Chul. Well, I live in Busan. And this morning, I took the train here. And during my train ride, I searched the internet on Semaul. And I saw that people liked Semaul items. So I noticed that people are still interested in Semaul. And on the flip side, people are interested in Semaul. But maybe this is a negative interest for Semaul. And there's another issue that we have to take a look at. The fundamental of Semaul is community. And in order to create that community, we do need the youth participation. Because when I was in Cambodia, Cambodia has 26 million people, of which the economically active population between the ages of 15 to 60 is 90%. And if we take a look at under 25, 75 to 80% of those within the age group of 15 to 60 is under 25. 100, there's a 130% penetration rate of smart devices. And so, what is the issue that we have to take a look at? In order to create communities, I think this is actually without any boundaries. If we are to revive K Semaul, I think maybe we can match the youth of other countries with the youth of Korea. When we did matching, we did not match the youth of Koreans with youth overseas, but rather the matching was done by, for older people in Korea with the younger people in other countries to share Semaul experience. But maybe we can do youth to youth matching, and I think that would be a great opportunity. Well, thank you very much. That is indeed a great idea. And the penetration rate of Cambodia is 130%. That is actually quite a notable figure. And I think that really should be a part of the youth Semarundong strategy. Let us go on to Kwon Gi Yun. Right, so I believe that all Young people of Korea, of course, uh, they have anxiety about their own future, including employment, including myself. Of course, I am employed now, but I believe that Semarundong could help instill a clear vision and future in young people. If it can do that, then it could be a very big incentive, a big attracting point for young people. So, of course, Semarundong itself is very good and desirable, but then also if we can also create a future for ourselves or instill a new future and vision through this, then it will be all the better. So for example, uh, Semarundong is also working together with other international organizations like 
African Development Bank, like AFDB. So if we can also provide young people who go through this MRI program opportunities to work in other organizations, international organizations, then I believe that uh, the young people would then be able to draw a better picture of their own future. And also, for example, Koika, they have their career ladder or like, for example, for those who complete a COICA program, then they also provide scholarship for them to move on to other studies. So then perhaps for Sema Rundong as well, maybe it can also help open up a new future for young people. Then I believe that it could be a big point of competitiveness and big advantage for the young people as well. Yes, thank you. Then the purpose of Semao Rundong and also if the purpose of the individuals participating in the Semao Rundong can be aligned with each other. So in other words, uh, in the administration studies, we call it incentive structure. So yes, thank you very much for the very good observation. And then also Ms. Pei and Mr. Lee, if you have anything to add, then please go ahead briefly. So for example, about your intended Direction? Any lively ideas? So when I went to Vietnam, I created a video of the activities that I conducted and I uploaded short videos on my SNS channel and the people that I befriended in Vietnam actually replied to these videos and the students at our school became interested in my volunteer programs as well. So I think by utilizing social networking, we can continue to keep in contact with the local community. And when the local community continues to write comments on my videos, then other people will be interested as well. So I hope that you will continue to provide us with your ideas, and maybe we can go and watch your videos. Uh. And yes, for myself, so similarly to what Mr. Kwon has mentioned, I would say that for the young people, the biggest point of interest is finding a job, employment. So I myself would be leaving university soon in search of employment. So for me, that is also a point of concern, a point of interest. So then to induce more interest and participation from young people, then for those who participate in the Sema Rundong, maybe we can also create a linkage to other activities. So for example, what Koika calls career ladder. So moving one step up at a time. So I do hope that we could have this kind of structural ladder approach so that young people upon learning Sema Rundong will then be able to continue in this career without worrying about employment. Then I believe that there is going to be a natural increase in the young generation's interest and participation. Yes, thank you very much then from the Sema Undong Center, as well as the foundation, as well as other related organizations like the municipalities and the provincial government. So I do hope that they take heed of the conversation today. Thank you very much for your important insight. And if needed, then I would also try to give my active support and also make recommendations to the relevant organizations. So with that, we have, I believe, heard from the panelists. And any questions? or comments from the floor? Any comments on what was commented by the panelists? We do have the microphone ready, so with a brief self-introduction, if you could also raise your questions. None? Or you may feel free to share your own experience, or you may ask for possible solutions to challenges that you have experienced. Anybody? If not, oh, yes, I missed to see you. Yes, a microphone, please. Uh, you can step towards the back. There's a microphone back there. 
Good afternoon. Thank you for the dialogue. I have a question to Mr. Kim Hyung Chul. Could you introduce yourself briefly? I am O Page, and I was one of the presenters yesterday, and I am Chinese. Well, as a presenter yesterday, I always I emphasized that projects designed by the local communities are important. And so could you share comments concerning that point? Well, I did not understand your question. So you mentioned that for ODA projects, ODA projects, yes, ODA projects, it has to be community-centered. So when projects are designed, it has to be designed by the local people or so you mentioned that that's an important success factor. So could you elaborate on that? Well, in conducting ODA activities, I started 15 years ago, and I'm still doing ODA projects. And having met Semaul, a lot has changed. And I think things change when you first meet Semaul and as time goes by. The reason is because when we do ODA, I think Semaul is probably the most appropriate model because when I was thinking about whether I should return to Korea from Senegal or remain in Senegal, I believe that people of the local community should be those who drive the projects. And then that was about the time when I moved from Senegal to Cambodia. So that was an opportunity for me to continue to see ODA projects. But what was unfortunate is that although we do discussions on a policy level, we see that there is not enough dialogue with the local community for ODA projects, but for Semaul projects, they would take a deep dive into the local community and their actual needs. And so that's something that I already mentioned. In, when we have Semal projects overseas, we need to make sure that the local community should participate. So we need to make sure that the local community can conduct the Semaul project themselves. I hope that was a clear answer to your question. Any other questions from the floor? Yes, please. Microphone, please. Microphone, if you could speak into the microphone. Right, so now I came to this forum with great expectations, and thank you very much. I appreciate the talk because now so far it was mostly academic topic, and so again, I very much look forward to the young people's work. Now, just my one question. So I see that the projects, I have been to all of where you are, so then all the overseas places where Semarundong took place. Now, many of them we cannot see even any traces anymore, so many of them are like that. So we have the the lead, Semarundong young leaders here, but then now, of course, um, now if we further promote the Semar Youth Forum, and also if we are to further promote Semarundong among the young people, then from a high schooler's perspective, then what would be a good way of attracting more young people into Semarundong? Then also to Mr. Kwan, now for young people to more actively engage in Semarundong, then what would be the incentives or the approaches? Then I believe that that would also be helpful for the Semal Foundation president as well as the professors at the university. I am also personally interested in that, so that is why I'm asking. All right, thank you. Then from a high 
schooler's perspective? <laughs> mm, I'll say, well, students, in order for them to become interested in Semaul, I believe maybe can be induced through various challenges or open competitions. Maybe you can promote open competitions through schools. If students participate in various competitions, inevitably they will have to research about Semarundong and that may lead to higher interest for Semarundong. So open competition or SNS challenges, I think, would be quite appropriate. Yes, SNS challenges. I don't even know if you know what that is. Yes, for example, asking people to dance according to a certain song. And SNS challenges can be done very easily on online platforms. Or if you could invite influencers to participate in the challenges, many people will also participate. Yes, I think that was a very interesting idea. So if you open an SNS challenge, I will certainly participate. Kwon gi would you also like to answer? Well, I would say that it is largely in line with what I mentioned earlier. So as someone in his mid-20s, so yes, Semarun done great, I like it. But then what about my future? How can I utilize this for my own future? for my own career. So I think this kind of vision presenting is very important. So Samarindo itself is very good. Activities are very good. And I was also involved in this Sri Lankan project and I am currently working in a tour, travel agency. So I was able to utilize my experience to get this employment. But then now, yes, yeah, so personally, I was able to leverage my own experience and my career. But then now, also for the Semaul Foundation, for example, then at the foundation level, if you could also offer some tips or open up some paths for the young people through Semaul Rundong. So again, Semaul Rundong itself is very good, but then now how can it be of use for individual young people's future and their career? I think that is also going to be very important. Okay, thank you. So that was also one uh, wish for the Semaul Foundation. And so that also probably means that the Semal Foundation's activities have to be more refined and more thoroughly planned. So thank you. So we have listened to the five panelists, and time has really flown by. So the organizers keep signaling me to wrap up this session. And let me ask, let me check whether there are any last comments that you would like to make. I would like to give you one minute each. <laughs> right, then Semal Youth Empathy Forum, I would like to ask for your interest. So we have, of course, it, there are overseas offices and also pilot projects overseas. So yes, we see overseas activities are very brisk and vibrant, but then I believe it is in Korea that we need Semal Rundong now. So they say that Korea and Koreans will become extinct in the next 200 years. So low fertility and also young people settlements. So we need to increase people. We need to also increase young people settling down in non-capital region. And that is what we need Saimarundong for. I believe that the perspective of the international society for Korea is full of interest. K-pop, and all the K things, K culture, everything that starts with a K is currently in the limelight. And so we shouldn't be hesitant. Semaul should also add a K to the front. And so I think we can create yet another K. And that is something that we should do with the youth. And as I mentioned before, youth to youth matching programs is what I would like to emphasize again. Thank you very much. 네, 저는 
개인적으로 적. Now for me personally, I have benefited so much from s e m a r u n d o n g I lived in a developing country for two years, learned a great deal, had so much experience, and also many of the achievements that I have made over the years, I believe, have been thanks to s e m a r u n d o n g And it is so good that I want to share this with others. I hope that young people, more young people, can continue to engage in s e m a r u n d o n g Thank you, and thank you very much for all the opportunities. 어, 말씀을 having listened to everyone it seems that everyone is really great and it was an honor for me to sit on the panel with such prominent people and it's a great honor for me and thank you 네 앞으로 세말 세말이라는 Well, 세말 itself. Now, personally, I always thought that it was quite interesting and fun. But what is fun from young people's perspective is now what I learn, what I study now. Will this be useful for me later on? I was thinking about that question. Perhaps I think uh, it would be not easy for me to keep moving on with this. So if there can be more opportunities, more ways to utilize what we gain from s e m a r u n d o n g then I believe that more young people would be drawn into s e m a r u n d o n g playing important roles. playing active roles. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Thank you very much. So yes, uh, we have already used up an hour and a half of the time given to us. So then the young s e m a r u n d o n g activists, their activities and also our expectations for their activities, I believe perhaps made us pay even closer attention to what they had to say and that probably made, made the time fly by. So once again, thank you very much to the valuable comments and sharing of experience by the panelists and I hope that they can be incorporated into even better programs at s e m a l Foundation. And also, I hope that more young people, young generation can be involved with Sema r u n d o n g So I hope that more opportunities and more space will be opened up for them as well. So with that, we will conclude session five, social contribution and the youth Sema r u n d o n g So once again, a big hand to the five panelists, please. Thank you.